Hey, Mike, welcome back home to South Florida, man. It's good to see you. Thanks. Thank I you. Wanted, I wanted to ask you, you spent the last couple of years with the Jets under offensive coordinator Mike LaFleur. I know he spent a lot of time in his career with, with Mike McDaniel. I was curious how you think that might kind of help you pick up the offense quicker here with your new team. Yeah, that was one of the the pluses of of coming to Miami was it's the same system. Now I'm sure there's different verbiage and, and things like that, but down to its core, it's it's from the same same uh, system. So it'll be definitely easier than learning a brand new offense. David. Hey Mike, welcome back, of course. Thank you. We saw the picture of you as a, as a youngster. It seems like uh, outside of Hard Rock Stadium or then uh, called Joe Robbie Stadium, right? Uh, um, right. What were some of your childhood memories as, as a Dolphins fan and uh, uh, who were some of your favorite players? Yeah, I mean, I definitely I grew up a big Dolphins fan. We would watch every Sunday. I mean, I remember I was still back in college, Dolphins fan, and, and they uh, I think it was 2016 when they made the playoffs and they played uh, – the Steelers in the wild card round. I, I remember coming home and, and watching that with my, my dad and my family. Um, I mean, my favorite players growing up were, whew, I mean, there's a lot of them. I mean, I loved, obviously loved watching Wes Welker. So it was pretty cool to meet him when I signed. Um, I mean, yeah, there's so many, there's so many, uh, big Ronnie Brown fan. Ronnie Brown was my first Jersey. I remember when they were running the wildcat with him. That was, that was pretty cool. I would probably have to say Ronnie Brown. Cause that was, that was my first Jersey that I went out and bought. And, uh, so when you were high school quarterback at, at U school, you were essentially on the same campus as Dolphins old practice practice facility. Uh, did you ever stop and think like, Hey, I could be there one day. Oh, no doubt. I mean, we would hear, we would hear whenever they would practice with crowd noise, we could hear it in class. So that's how, that's how close we were. But um, I mean, growing up, especially at that age, like middle school and even into the beginning part of high school, I didn't, I didn't think I was going to be in the NFL. I was more of a baseball player. And my goals were, were the MLB and then kind of caught on late with football and, and was a late bloomer and didn't play until my, my senior year and then had some success. And then obviously, the story goes on, but it, it is funny, like looking back on it, like I would, we would practice baseball right next to the bubble and you would see the Dolphins facility all the time. And, and still, like, it never really crossed my mind that this was a, this could be a, uh, an opportunity. So it, it's pretty funny looking back at it. Hal. Hi, Mike. Uh, Hal Habib with the Palm Beach Post. Welcome back home. Thank you. Um, I want to ask you a little bit more about the uh, switching from baseball to football. Um, I go back. I, I know there's a story about Dan Marino, how he made a similar decision sitting at his dining room table one night. And it was sort of like, OK, which way are you going to go? What was the moment for you when you decided, OK, football is my future and it's not baseball? Yeah, it was it wasn't till late late into my senior year I knew the summer going into my senior year when I was going to be the starter for the football team I, I kind of all right there's there's some chance but the problem is especially nowadays if, if you don't have any like junior film or guys are getting offers so early like I had no film so coaches college coaches would come in and they could say they liked me after watching a practice but there was no film to go off of so they were they, they couldn't pull the trigger on an offer so I thought baseball would have to be my route because I had more experience and more exposure at that because in, during the summer when you do all your football camps, that's when I was going and doing the travel baseball tournaments and all that and being in front of colleges and, and I was getting some some looks for colleges. And then senior year, started to have some success during the season and more coaches starting to take notice football. And I found out football gave full rides and baseball doesn't. So... <laughs> That helped. I'm sure my parents were, were a big fan of that decision, too. But, uh, no, they were supportive both ways. But that's kind of how it went down. As I was a late bloomer in football. And, and once I kind of caught a hang of it and had some success, I fell in love with it. And, and I'm, I'm really happy with my decision. And now that you're in the NFL, you've had some very notable games. I mean, if you're charting it, you know, you go from not playing to putting up some big numbers in some games. How do you describe your career thus far to someone who, you know, doesn't 
maybe he hasn't followed it as closely as obviously you have. How would you describe your career? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, just as, as any quarterback, backup quarterback in the NFL, you, you got to be ready when called upon and, and you're never going to know when that is. So that's the whole mantra of being a backup quarterback is staying ready. So that's what I struggled with my first, my rookie year in, and I was the third inactive guy all year at, in Dallas and, and kind of took it for granted and, and didn't really stay mentally locked in. So when it was time to compete for the two, kind of I didn't feel as prepared as I, as I should. And then I learned from that mistake. And, and I tried to keep that learning experience with me throughout my entire career. And yeah, you just got to stay ready. And, and luckily, I, I got the opportunity to play and we had some success and, and it was some good team wins and, and good offensive performances and, and hoping to build upon that. Thank you. You're welcome. Chris? Oh. Hey, Mike, Chris Perkins from the South Florida Sun Sentinel. Um, I wanted to ask you about playing with the rib injury last year and where that ranks on your list of accomplishments, because I, I know to a certain extent you guys are expected to play while injured. But, you know, Mike, this is a rib injury for a quarterback. And, and so where, where does that rank on your career list of accomplishments? Accomplishments might not be the, uh, the right <laughs> word, but uh, no, I'm just messing with you. Um, <laughs> No, it was, it was crazy at the time when it happened in Buffalo, like, yeah, it hurt, but I, I kind of just like, all right, maybe I just bruised my rib or something or, or I'm just sore and it was cold out. So that's not helping. And then when I got the news that I broke five ribs or four ribs, whatever the number was, I, it was kind of like, I didn't believe it. I was like, I just, it doesn't hurt that bad. And then, and then a week having a, having a layoff for two weeks and a week of just not doing anything it got really tightened up and then trying to throw through it was really painful every throw hurt I mean I'm proud of it because I didn't tap out and, and I proved to the guys that that quarterbacks can be tough too and hopefully my toughness isn't in question but yeah it was it was a good learning experience and uh if anything I'm just happy that it proved that I'm not just one of those uh little sissy quarterbacks that people like to to make fun of from time to time. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. Travis? Well, Mike, we know you're a tough dude. We know you're a good quarterback, but I also am a fan of your social media game with the uh, tweet you put out <laughs> with you and Dan Feeney and, uh, and Braxton Barrios coming to South Florida. I was curious, was that your edit? Is that your handiwork? You got some skills on the social media side of things? So it was my idea. I texted, uh, texted a guy in, in our agent, in my agency. I was like, Hey, what do you think? Do you think that we could get this done? Once I found out that, uh, Dan and, and Braxton were signing and he, uh, he got it done for me. So I can't, I wish I was, I got, maybe I'll, I'll make that my next off season project. So I don't have to ask people and I can kind of turn out more content, <laughs> but it was my, it was my idea. Just, I, I didn't execute it. Very good. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. <clears throat> Joe? Hey, Mike, Joe, and Palm Beach. Good to see you. How's it going? Hey, I, I got a real kick out of the uh, Mike effing white t-shirts last year. I don't know if they're still available on uh, Amazon.com. Yeah, I don't know either. But listen, uh, the, the, what, what I thought was cool about the t-shirts is that it was clear that your teammates liked and respected you. How did you go about, what do you think is the best way to find your space in a locker room and develop the right kinds of bonds with your teammates? Yeah, I think um, I've said it in, in countless interviews before in New York, and it's just, that's my favorite. My favorite part about playing football is the, the locker room, the team aspect, the camaraderie, whatever you want to call it. It's it's, we're very blessed to do what we do. And the fact that we get to go in and play football for a living every day and we, we get to show up to work. And if you want to get in the sauna before work starts, you get in the sauna. If you want to get in the hot tub, like we're, it's just, we're really lucky. And, and I think if you go in with the right mindset of, of enjoying everybody there and getting to know different people from different walks of life and, and just enjoying your teammates and enjoying the time you spend together, because we do spend a lot of time together, whether it's practice, training camp, meetings travel away game all that all that good stuff you get to know a lot of guys and, and you enjoy it so that's that's been my approach about it is is 
whatever my role is, take, take on that role and then help whoever you can. And, and whether it's in the quarterback room, whether it's the off on the field or with, if you're running with the threes, you, you help your guys, if you're running with the twos, you help your guys. And whenever it's your time to, to run with the ones, you, you, you hope that you have built a bond and, and that you can kind of build on that to, to, develop trust with them so that that's kind of how I approach it and, and I think it's it's um had success for me have, have you ever met Tua or anything like that I have not I have not met Tua yet thanks Mike yeah no problem David hey Mike so uh back on the baseball uh, give us the rundown the scouting report on you as a baseball prospect uh you were a pitcher right so um, right what were you throwing on the mound my senior year, I was up to 93, uh, tall, lanky guy. I think I was like 180 pounds soaking wet. So I could throw four pitches pretty much wherever I wanted. Fastball, change up, slider, curve. Uh, I like to change. I, I like to kind of pitch backwards maybe and, and just keep hitters guessing. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of the gist of, of who I was as a pitcher. Cool. And I, I want to ask you one more about uh, Braxton Barrio, Stan Feeney coming over with them, what it's going to be like and, and what those guys are like uh, as, as teammates. Yeah. Um, I told, told Chris Greer when I, when I got to talk to him, when I signed, I, they're, they're, they're such good locker room guys, I think, which uh, now I might be biased because I spent four years with Braxton and two years with Dan, but, but I do think they can, it seems to me from the outside looking in on this team and, and playing them the past four years, it's, you could tell it's a close knit group and it's they're building a really good culture and you can tell just the way they kind of interact. And, and even you see posts on social media and all that, like we're all, we're all kind of connected in, in that way. You see things from different teams. So I think Braxton and Dan will, will fit right in with, with the culture that's being built and they will be good locker room guys. And, and, and hopefully um, we can, can, they can contribute and, 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 keep building towards something special. Chris? Hey, Mike, uh, I wanted to ask about your free agency because it, it, it seemed like it was over pretty quickly. So uh, what, how much interest was there from other teams? And once you found out the Dolphins were interested, was it an instant yes? How did things go there? Yeah, there was, there was a couple of teams that called my agent when the, the – a free agency period started at, at noon or whatever it was on that Monday. But um, I mean, I knew in the back of my mind that, that Miami was, was at the top of my list just because obviously one going back home, living in South Florida, which is, is easier for my family. Cause I, I live in Tampa during the off season. So that's not a bad drive. And especially with, with two, uh, two little ones, it makes traveling way easier not having to hop on a plane, but I mean, same system was was huge with me too because because I, I really do enjoy the system I felt like I grasped it pretty well the past two years so I wanted to keep building upon my knowledge in the system and, and my experience so it just it kind of felt like the perfect storm and and you know same division so I, I know what the Patriots run I played against them before I know what the Bills run obviously going against the, the Jets in practice the last two years I know what they run so just kind of familiarity all around was was what made my uh, my my decision pretty easy. And, and then one other thing, the opportunity, you, I guess you had an opportunity to play here in the season finale. Um, talk about that. And the, I guess the missed opportunity there. Yeah, it was, it, it sucked. Um, I tried, I tried all week to just push through it. Cause I was so excited to finally, I mean, I've, I've backed up Joe down there and before, but I've, I had never gotten the chance to play. So I thought it would have been really, really cool to be able to have all my family out and, and play and play in the stadium I grew up going to. Now it looks way different, so it wouldn't probably feel like the same stadium, but it, but it was. So it, it, it definitely sucked missing out on that opportunity, but such is life. Thanks. Omar? Mike, Mike, I wanted to ask you, um, one, why Tampa for the home base? And two, when you, when you were playing at Nova, did you – have any interactions with players? Because I know they're they're always going back and forth from the facility to the the medical center. Did you ever run into any players? Because I know you were a baseball player, so you're right there. Uh, not not that I remember uh, running into any players, but I mean, 
Yeah, not, not not off the top of my head. Maybe maybe to be honest with you, I could have walked by someone and, and not even have known. So I'm sure there there might have been a run in at some point that I just wasn't aware of, but not that I can remember. And then uh, Tampa in the off season. So I met my wife here in Tampa. She's born and raised in Tampa, so she she calls the shots, and uh, we picked Tampa as a home base. But no, I, I really like it in Tampa. Spent two years here at USF and. I like it a lot. It's close enough to my family in South Florida that I can just pop down when I need to. But uh, I kind of like it's a little more slower pace, which is kind of more my speed up here. Gotcha. How? Mike, I'm uh, wondering uh, what your thoughts are on the upcoming season, how you see yourself fitting into this team and what your role will be. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of excitement in this upcoming season. I mean, it's it's a very talented roster. There was a lot of success, success last year that I think we can build upon, and I'm really excited to, to be a part of it. And uh, as far as my role, I mean, as any backup in the quarterback, it's it's to support the guy and 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 do whatever you can. I think some of the best some of the best quarterback rooms I've been a part of is is just everyone has a voice and everyone has a say and and. and it's really good uh, dialogue in the room and, and, and support systems. And it makes going to work fun and, and you enjoy going to the quarterback room and, and just shooting the breeze with the guys and, and enjoying everybody's personalities and then getting on the field and, and help just helping. It's, it's just, it's whenever you have that relationship in the quarterback room, a healthy, obviously healthy competition and all that good stuff. But, but when you're supporting the guy and, and saying, Hey man, this is what I see or, or, when it's your turn, you ask like, Hey guys, are you seeing any of this? Like that's, that's been the, the best rooms I've been around. And, and that's kind of my uh, plan of action going into it is just being a sounding board for whoever and, and helping however I can. We have time for one more. We'll go to Travis. Hey Mike, kind of in that same vein, uh, last year Tua spoke very glowingly about, you know, Daryl Bevel's impact on his career. I was curious if you had a chance to meet Coach Bevel yet and how excited you are to work with him. Yeah, I have. I, I, I got a chance to meet Coach Bevel when I signed on uh, Thursday. And, and, and I can see why Tua would say that. He just, off of just initial meeting him, he, he seems like a very intelligent guy. So you're, you know you're going to learn a lot about the quarterback position. And he's, he's also been around a lot of talented players and, and good offenses. So he has a tons of, ton of experience that, that he, I'm sure he draws upon. And, and when, he's, when he's coaching the guys and, and listen to it, Tua had an unbelievable season last year. And, and I'm sure there's, there's no coincidence that Coach, Coach Bevel was involved and in, in the, entire, the entire offensive staff in, in general. So I'm really excited and, and just learning from someone new that has so many, so many different stops and, and so much experience. So I'm, I'm really excited to get to work with him.